Hi everyone, I'm Maggie and this is Bramble Blossom and today we are going to ask some important questions um, to help you take your second step in your first ever garden. Um, some of the most common questions are um, what should I grow? When should I grow it? And how much should I grow? Right? So there are lots of questions within each of those questions. Um, so the first question, what should you grow? Well, what do you like? Um, if your family hates tomatoes, I'm going to guess that it's because you've always bought them from the grocery store and everyone hates grocery store tomatoes, even me. Um, even though I absolutely love tomatoes. Um, I'm joking about that a little bit, but also very serious. Um, so if you don't like tomatoes, don't grow 88 tomato plants like I do. Um, if you hate spinach, um, well, again, it might be because you buy it at the grocery store. Um, my oldest will not eat spinach um, unless it comes from the garden. And so um, there are things you may want to try that you think that you're not sure if you like them or not. Um, and I encourage um, utilizing a little bit of space for that. Um, and along with that, um, determining what size of garden you're going to have, right? Like I mentioned in the first video, um, I currently have about 45 by 20 or 20 by 45 um, feet of in-ground space. And um, I don't recommend that for your first year. Um, if you're doing raised beds, two four by eight beds um, is probably a good place to start. Um, if you're doing in-ground, um, doing something like an eight by eight would be a good place to start. And um, kind of determining what's what's priority. Um, so another thing to consider is some people love radishes, for example, some people hate them. Um, but if you roast radishes, the flavor profile changes completely. It's an entirely different food. So, um, while I am one of the only people in my house who will eat raw radishes, if I roast them, the kids will eat them and they don't even know they're eating radishes, which is great. Um, and radishes are also a great thing to grow because they only take about 30 days from putting the seed in the ground to eating fresh radishes out of the garden in the early springtime. So um, that's also a bonus that can give you some really quick victories in the garden so you feel like you're successful. Um, so you keep coming outside. Um, so that's something that I would recommend. Um, and kind of considering with your size and the things that you want to grow, um, larger things like tomatoes, um, squash um, of any variety. Um, you need to um, plan on at least a square foot for each plant. And when I say any variety of squash, I'm going to show you something really quickly here. Um, to I have a cat under my feet. Um, so I will show you um, something that I have that can really minimize the footprint in your garden um, while still allowing you to grow some of those things that take up a lot. So in my garden, I have these cattle panels that are arched. You don't necessarily have to use this, um, but any kind of trellis that you can create um, to grow vining things up. Um, so I use these for my cucumbers, the arched ones I use for my cucumbers, my pole beans, um, my winter squashes, and then I have these flat, straight, well, they're not really straight, um, theoretically straight panels are what I grow my tomatoes up. And so that can really minimize, help minimize like the um, footprint if you are working with in your garden. Um, so yeah, answering those questions in terms of what to grow, what do you like? Um, what do you want to try? What are some things that you could maybe prepare in different ways that would make them enjoyable um, to you and your family? Um, when? So one of the very first things that you need to figure out is what your average last frost date is. So where I am, um, it's typically in the beginning of May, though um, <laughs> 
it's Indiana, so that can change. Um, and the next question that you need to answer is, do you want to start um, from seed or do you want to buy started plants? And um, if you're starting small, then buying started plants maybe isn't necessarily a bad option, though there are going to be some things that you can't necessarily buy started or won't do well started um, and do really kind of need to be direct sown. And I will talk about that um, probably in a different video entirely because um, that can get a little bit long-winded. Um, if you are starting from seeds, um, there are seed starting uh, calculators online. Um, I use one every year and I get out my calendar and I make a list of when I need to start all of the things and some years I do a really good job of following that and this year I did not so everything kind of got started all at the same time pretty much um, hopefully that won't cause any major problems uh, but we'll find out I definitely recommend um, doing a lot of planning um, sitting down with some grid paper um, and and um, kind of plotting things out. If anyone needs help um, figuring that out, I'd be happy to help. Um, I can show you guys um, maybe in another video uh, how I do mine and um, kind of how I go about my planning process. Um, and then I also recommend um, journaling. That's also something that I sometimes do a good job of and sometimes don't. Um, but it helps you to know, um, you know, what worked well, what didn't work so well, things that you can maybe do in the future. Um, and then how much? This is a really tricky question because there's not a perfect answer. Um, one size fits all. So how big is your family? Um, if you are just planting for yourself um, and you don't plan on dehydrating anything or canning anything or freezing anything, um, just grow what you know that you can eat. Um, and again, that's tricky because if you've never grown something, then you don't really know how well it will do, how much it will, will produce. So, you know, bigger things like tomatoes or squash. Start with one plant and go from there. Um, or if you're the only person in your house that will eat those things, like start small. Um, but if you do plan to can or freeze or dehydrate things, then you can obviously plant a lot more. So for example, last year we had, um, but again, 88 tomato plants and I was able to can all of our salsa and pasta sauce. Um, I dehydrated cherry tomatoes. Um, we also, I did tomato juice. I did some ketchup, um, though not enough. I did tomato paste. Um, so basically my goal, diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes for like chili and things like that. So my goal was to can enough for our family to be able to eat our tomato products all winter long. And it is March and we still have canned tomatoes in our house. So I feel like I was successful in that. Um, so there's that. And then additionally, um, <clears throat> some things to think about are things that uh, essentially become shelf stable for a period of time once they've been cured, um, which just means that they've been, um, for example, like winter squash, you leave it out in the sun um, until its outer um, shell, so to speak, hardens, and then you can just leave it in a cool dry place in your house for months and months and months. Like we have some on a shelf in our house still. Um, and again, it's March, so um, it basically became shelf stable. So those are things that you don't necessarily, I mean, you need a shelf to put them on or um, a basement to put them in that isn't gonna be overrun by rodents. Um, and then you, they can just hang out um, until you're ready to eat them. You don't have to do any like special preserving. Um, onions you need to allow to dry out um, the outer skin um, and they can just kind of hang out as well. Um, so those are kind of some big questions to um, ask yourself and that can help you to narrow down um, 
some things. Also, I want to go back and mention um, in the seeds versus buying starts. Um, if in most places you will start seeing those started plants months probably before you should actually put them in the ground. Um, so the general rule of thumb where I am is our last average last frost for this year is projected to be uh, May 2nd but I will not be putting anything that cannot tolerate some cold. So peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, um, zucchini, all of that kind of stuff, the summer stuff, right? I will not be putting in my garden until mid-May because we are prone to get frosts late. And even though our average last frost is projected like two weeks before that, uh, melons, those kinds of things, um, you, okra, we like to grow okra here. Um, I know some people are probably going to be like, what, what is okra? Um, <laughs> but, um, those things, they need the heat. And so they do not do so well. Um, if you put them out and they get frosted, they will stunt and not grow too well. So, um, those are some things to remember just because there are plants in the store doesn't mean you should put them in your ground. Um, which is kind of a a bad situation because people who don't know um, tend to do that and end up with dead plants that they spent good money on so I don't want to see you do that so um, yeah find out when your average last frost is and then you want to wait a couple of weeks after that before you put any of those things in the ground and thank you for joining me here at Bramble Blossom